Okay, so we're back here with objective one. Going to do a few more problems here. On the first part of it, uh, solving some rational equations, but we're going to look at some slightly more intimidating ones with complex fractions, wrong direction, this way. Okay, so yeah, yes indeed, complex fractions. But don't let this scare you. Don't let it scare you because it's still a proportion, just a crazy one. Let me, uh, make that pin happen. So, for example, if you had uh, 3 over, no, 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 um, 17 equals, whoops, yeah, let me make this a little bit more reasonable here. 3 over x equals 1 over 5, you would just cross multiply, right? That's what we've been doing, that's what we started the lesson off with. This is the same exact thing, it just looks a lot more complicated. Here's my first cross product right there. It's 5 times the fraction 1 over x plus 1, which becomes 5 over x plus 1. Okay, and then the second cross product, which this has to be equal to, is 1 times the whole entire denominator, so it doesn't change. 1 half plus x over x plus 1. Now, it's one of the, it's, it's similar to what we have done in just the previous couple exercises. We can easily simplify this by just multiplying this by the least common denominator. Least common denominator, well, there's only two. There's a two and there's an x plus one. They're both different, so that must be the common denominator. So two times x plus one, okay? On uh, the first fraction, whenever I, I distribute, I'm distributing on both sides x plus 1 will cancel, leaving me with a 2. So 5 times 2 gives me a 10. Okay? And then on equals the 1 half, the 2 would cancel with that 2, leaving me with just the x plus 1. Now, the x plus 1 would cancel with the x plus 1, leaving me with a 2. So I have a, a positive 2x. Piece of cake because look, I've got 3x, subtract the 1 over, equals 9, so x is equal to 3, that's it. Look at that, it wasn't too bad. Check to see, is 3 going to make the denominator equal to 0 anywhere? Mm-mm, sure isn't, so that's got to be the answer. Um, so, look at this marvelous example. This one is for you to try. Just a little tip before you tr you start this 12, make it 12 over 1, and then you can cross multiply. All right, go ahead and pause that and give give it a try yourself. All right, uh, notice how the one that I did was a linear one, and the one that you had to do was quadratic. You get two answers. So uh, cross multiplying there, I, I color coordinated it for you so one of the cross products is blue and the other cross product is green okay and then the common denominator turns out to be x times x minus 2 so multiply both sides by that to get rid of all of the fractions expand stuff out cram stuff back together you get a quadratic factor that thing and you get the two answers 6 and 12 looking back 6 and 12, neither one of those is going to make those fractions undefined, so we're in good shape. All right, let's try um, going backwards again, jeez. Let's try a word problem here. Company produces computer desks. The average cost to produce X desks can be modeled by this equation. So C of X, <clears throat> C of X, that's the average, right? That's the average cost. Um, how many desks should the company produce each month in order to achieve an average cost of $85 per desk? Where's the 85 going to go? Is it going to go in for X or is it going to go in for C of X? If you answered C of X, you're right. So it's just right here. 85 is equal to 4,000 plus 50X over X. How easy is this going to be? If I just multiply both sides of this by the common denominator, it's just x, and all the fractions are gone. So times this by x, and I have 85x on uh, the left side, and then on the right side, the x will just cancel out, giving me 4,000 
plus 50x, subtract over the 50x, and I get 35x equals 4,000, divide whatever 4,000 divided by 35 is. And uh, I, I neglected to call up a calculator here, so I'll just uh, cheat here and look at, ah, uh, it's approximately 114 desks. Vital information. Now you can sleep better at night knowing that. Now, uh, let's take a little break here. The second part of this lesson is about quad is the inequalities, the rational inequalities. Let's uh, contain that in its own little video, all right?